Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so let's use our knowledge of dialog boxes. Basically, the J option pane, um, you know, the methods, right, to create a simple payroll program, right? That is going to ask the user to enter their name, to enter how many hours they worked in a particular week, and then how, how, how much they get paid every hour. So if you work, let's say, one hour this week, the whole of this week you work one hour, and for and for each hour you get paid ten dollars. Then that means for the whole of this week you get paid ten dollars. If you work two hours this week and you get paid every hour ten dollars, then you for the whole of this week you get you are going to get paid twenty dollars. If you if you work, um, you know, let's say f uh, five hours this week and you get paid ten dollars, then the whole of this week you get paid fifty dollars. So that's that's how the program is going to work. Well, we are going to use our knowledge of Geoption Pain to do that. All right, so since, since we're going to be using the Geoption Pain, we need to go ahead and, and import it, right? So we need to import it so that this, pro this program can have access to it. So I'm going to go ahead and import the javax.swing.j option pane. If you don't understand any of this, please feel free to go back to the previous videos to, to kind of um, get an understanding of it. All right, so we are importing the Geoption Plane class located in the javax.swing package in the Java API. With the Geoption Plane, we don't have to create an object. We can just directly access the methods located in the um, in the Geoption Plane class. All right, so the first thing we want to do is display to the user, tell the user, please enter your name, right? And we can do that using the Geoption Plane's show input dialog. So J Option Plane. Show input dialog, and we know the Geoption Pane, the show input dialog, takes in an argument, right? And the argument is going to be what's going to be displayed on that dialog box. So we say, please enter your name. All right. So the Geoption Pane's show input dialog is going to pop up a dialog box with a text box embedded in the dialog box, and it's going to allow the user to type in a value. Now, whatever the user types is going to be returned. It's going to be sent back to us as a string. It's going to be returned right here. It's, it's going to say, okay, the user has typed in something. Here you go. And when it's saying here you go, we need a place to store that value that the user has typed. Now, the show input dialog method always returns a string. It always does return a string. And so since if it's done returning the user's value you know, typed, if it's done returning that value typed to us as a string, we need a place, we need a string variable to basically hold that value. So I'm going to come up here and declare a string variable. I'm going to call it username. So this username variable is what's going to receive whatever the show input dialog method is returning to us. It's returning to us whatever the user has typed. And so we are storing it here. Since it's a string, since it, since it always returns a string, we need to declare a string variable to hold that value here. Well, this is basically a, a, a reference variable, right? It's holding. It's going to. It's going to hold the, a reference to the string object that a user has typed. We talked about strings, and you can go back to strings and then kind of refresh your memory there. But this reference variable is is going to hold the memory address of the string object, okay, or the string that a user types. The string object that a user types, pretty much. Okay. All right, so since we don't need to convert, since we need this value as a string, we can just leave it. We don't have to convert it to a number, and we don't need it. It's, it's, it's basically a string, so there's no need converting it to any any other data type. We need it perfectly as a string, so we are done with that. The next thing we want to display to the user is, please enter how many hours you worked this week, right? We, we, want, we want to know that, and so we're going to use the same idea, the same dialog box to ask the user that. So Geoption Pane dot show input dialog and we know we want to display in the dialog box where we want to display please enter how many hours you worked oops this week all right and we know this is also going to pop up a text box similar to this one but it's going to say please enter how many hours you worked this week it's going to have a text box in, in there. 
Um, so so but this is going to pop up a dialog box, right? A dialog box, not, not a text box. The, the dialog box is going to have a text box embedded in it. So after the user is done typing, how many hours they work, you know, that, that particular week. The show input dialog method, remember we talked about the fact that it always returns a string. Even if you type in a number here, you work two hours, you work five hours or 10 hours, it's going to return that number. Not as a number, it's going to return it as a, as a string. If it's four, it's going to return four as a string and not as a number. Remember the Joption pane show input dialog always returns a string. So if it's returning a string initially, then we need to create a string variable to hold that initial string value. So I'm going to come up here and say string, I'm going to call it string use, I'm going to create a variable, a string variable, I'm going to call it string user inputs string, right? That's that's how I'm going to call it initially. So this is going to, this, this is a string um, class type variable, reference variable. It's going to hold the reference or the memory address of the string object, okay, that the user is going to basically, or that, or that the show input dialog method is, re is returning, right? So if the show input dialog method is returning whatever the user has typed for hours as a string, we need a place to store it. I'm going to store it initially here in user input string. So user input string is going to store whatever the user types for hours, all right? Now, since we don't need, since we don't need that is the, the value stored in user input string, since we don't need it as a string, we need it as a number so we can work, we can do some calculations with it. We can perform calculations on strings. And so we need to convert this user input string to, in this case, an integer because we're dealing with hours here, right? Well, well we can make it a double if we want, but let's just keep it as an integer, right? Let's deal with just one, two, three, four, basically whole numbers or whole integers. Right, integers, pretty much, not not decimals or anything like that. We can have one point one and a half hours. You can say one point five hours, right? But let's just keep it as one, two, three, four, like basically whole integers. <clears throat> All right, so we need to convert it because this is a string. We need to convert it to an integer so we can use it. Right, so this is where we use the methods in Java's wrapper classes. I'm going to use integer dot pass int and we know integer to pass int takes in an argument right this is a method and the method takes in an this method takes in an argument we'll talk more about methods what is going to be passed into this parenthesis is called an argument we'll talk more about methods so don't worry so what we want to pass as an integer or pass to an integer is the content of user input string and once this integer this pass int method converts this value, this string value, to an integer, it's going to return it. It's going to send it back to us. And if it's sending it back to us, then we need a proper place to store it. Since it's returning an integer, we need to make sure we have a variable that's declared as an integer to store it. So I'm going to come up here to declare an int variable, okay? It's going to return an int variable, uh, an, an int value here. So we need an int variable, okay? Over here, it, it returns an int, okay? It returns an int. Once it's done converting the value here, it returns an int. So we need an int variable to hold uh, in that value. And that value is going to be user hours, right? This was first the string, but we can't work with strings in terms of math. We can't do some calculations of math. So we needed to convert that string to a real integer, or, or, or sorry, a real int. And so I declared an int variable to hold that value. And so user hours is going to store whatever the user typed converted um, converted to an int, okay? So now we have the actual number value here. All right, so let's do the same thing for how much they get paid um, every hour, right? Yeah, let, let's do the same thing for how much they get, they get paid every hour. I'm going to make a copy of this. We're going to change some values. Uh, as a matter of fact, I shouldn't do that. For now, I'm just going to um, just, just type it so that you don't get confused. In the future, we'll be, we'll be doing uh, maybe more copy and paste, I believe. All right, or we'll mix it up. So, all right, so the next thing we want to ask the user is how much do you get paid an hour? All right, so we, I'm going to, it's going to be similar. You can even guess what we're going to do. I'm going to use the Gaussian pane dot show input dialog to ask the user to enter, please enter how much you get paid an hour. All right, so the Geoption Pane showing per dialog is going to, uh, dialog method is going to pop up a 
<coughs> sorry, it's going to pop up a dialog box and display this message on it and allow the user to type in a value and whatever the user types is going to be returned as a string. And so we need a place to store it initially. We can reuse this user input string. We can reuse it and let's, let me do that and explain, and explain that. Since the gopsion pane show input dialog method always returns a string, we have to basically store that value first in a, in a string variable. So over here, we remember how programs work from top to bottom, right? So over here, we stored the hours that a user typed, which is going to be initially a uh, string. <clears throat> and then we converted the, val the, the value stored in there to, to basically an integer or an int. User input string, okay, contained a, a previous value, which is the hours worked. Over here, we are replacing that value. Remember, we talked about the fact that you can replace the, the content or the value of a variable with another value, all right? So it had a value already. We are done using it. We are done using it. We've converted the value to an integer and st uh, or we've con converted the value to an int and stored it here. And so we, we, you know, we have our int value here. We don't care about what's stored in here anymore. So we are reusing the variable and we are replacing the content in there already to the new content, right? Because we are done using it. We are done. We are done using that content, all right? So please enter how much you get paid. This is going, this is going to type in how much they get paid. But we are expecting a double because Asia can type in two dollars and fifty six cents, two point five six, or ten dollars and eighty cents, ten point eight zero, right? So we're expecting a double. So first of all, we are going to get it as a string because we know the show and put dialog method always returns a string. So we need to go ahead and convert what's stored in here as a string. We need to convert it first of all to a double so we can use that actual double val double value to um, for math to calculate basically how much we get paid every week, right? And so I'm going to use one of Java's rubber classes, double dot pass double. And what do we want to pass as a double? What we want to pass as a double is the content of user input string. So once it's done converting the content of user input string, right? The content what the user has typed. Once it's done converting it to a double, it's going to return it. It's going to send it back to us as a double. And so we need a proper variable, a double variable to store that value. And so I'm going to come up here and create a double or declare a double variable. I'm going to call it user hourly wage. And then user hourly wage is going to store whatever the user typed, okay, for, for basically how, how much they get paid an hour, which was initially stored as a string, converted to a double. Right, that's what use our hourly, hourly wage is going to store. And then now we have our values. We can basically display how much they get paid by multiplying um, how many hours they worked, which we have stored in user hours, by user hourly, hourly wage, which is how much they get paid every hour. And we can even go ahead and create another variable to store that, right? We can do that. We can create another variable since we know that it's going to result in a double, when you your pay could result in a double, because if you worked two hours and you receive, let's say, two point five or two dollars fifty cents, when you multiply two times two point five, you know you're going to you know you can get basically you, you, the result is a double, right? You can get if you if you let's say get paid eight point seven five eight dollars and seventy five cents, and you worked two hours. When you multiply two by eight dollars and seventy-five cents, you're going to get a double. So we're expecting a double for the wage, right? Although it can be an integer, but when you look at it, it can be an integer. It, it can look like an integer, but it's really a double because you, your wage over here is being st stored as a double. And when you multiply a double by um, an integer, you, you basically get a double, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and create a double. Oops, over here I, I used a capital letter. If you caught it, that's great. Um, it's supposed to be a, a small letter, lowercase. I think it's because uh, because of this. All right. So double weekly wage, or let's say wage, all right? Wage, user wage. Let's use user wage. And user wage is going to store the wage, the final wage. So in order to get user wage, we multiply user hours, which we have here by the asterisk sign user hourly wage right which we have here 
So we have user wage stored here. Now we can use the Jobption Pane Show Message dialog to just display it because we have the value here. So Jobption Pane dot show. Oops, message dialog. And we know that we we have to pass in null to center the dialog box on the screen, and we can just say that the string and say user oops sorry my typing is really bad user gets paid let's concatenate it with the value user wage every week right all right we are done but anytime we use the job pain remember we have to make a call to system dot exit And system.exit is going to terminate that extra task that is started by using the Jobption pane. That extra task is called a thread. So system.exit is going to terminate it, right, so that the program terminates com completely. If you don't do that, you, 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 if you don't do that, you know, you, your program is not done. It's not, it's, it will still be running, right, because of that extra task or that extra thread. I'm going to pass in zero. Zero is going to be passed to the operating system. And when it gets past the operating system, it's normally an indication that the program runs successfully. It's normally an indication that the program run from the top top to bottom without encountering any errors. It hits this line and was able to send zero, right? And if zero, the operating system sees zero, it's okay. It says, okay, your program runs successfully. All right. So I'm going to compile this to see if we have any errors. Compile, and we do have some errors. So let's just cross-check to see what it's saying. It's saying cannot find symbol. Symbol is variable user hourly wage all right i didn't declare it a user hourly wage um let's see user hour over here i declared it as user hour wage right and over here i, I use it use it as user hourly wage so i need to make sure that the names match so it's my fault i need to make sure the names match i'm going to change this to user hourly wage so that so now over here it knows that i'm referring to this it knows what i'm talking about now so compile this and now it's working okay so run let's see what happens so please enter your name i'm going to say well we didn't use the values for for names right so let, let's let's cancel this let's just let's keep canceling don't worry about this it's because we don't have a we, we don't have code for what to for what to um we don't have code for what to happen when you hit a cancel button so don't worry about this that's really what's happening so in our output output statement over here let's add our name instead of saying user let's use actual value username right concatenated with the string gets paid user wage every week right so now it's much better compile this run enter your name i'm going to say k right my name is kakra but then some people call me k most people call me k so k hit ok please enter how many hours you worked this week i'm going to say i worked 40 hours right hit ok please enter how much you get paid an hour i'm going to say 825 right and then hit okay now it says k gets paid 330 every week well i was supposed to add like a dollar sign here so k, pay, k gets paid before the wage gets displayed we can put a dollar sign here right don't worry about it we will f f we will work on trying to format values real number values as currency values you know real currency values so they look proper but for now let's just you know you know kind of use this dollar sign to make up for it let's compile run let's do it again okay well let's use kakra this time hit okay i work 35 hours and i get paid nine dollars an hour let's just say that hit okay k gets paid 315 dollars every week so that's how to create a simple uh, um, pay, payroll program right that that basically kind of kind of calculates how much you get paid every week and we can see that our um, extra task is terminated because we made a call to system that um, exit we don't have the program has been terminated correctly okay so this is a way to just um, uh, basically code to just incorporate all we've learned with the Jobption pane right so far so Jobption pane we use the methods we mix it up we converted the values to numbers and we did some calculations we displayed it out okay so if you have any questions please comment down below and I'll do everything to respond to them Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next video. All right, then. Bye-bye.